Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of Farming Matters, which is the North Central Region SARE's uh, YouTube series that really celebrates and learns with our SARE farmer rancher grantees. <laughs> and I'm also here, here with uh, Marie Flanagan, our communication specialist and uh, producer of the show. Marie, Hello, everyone. Yes. And I am delighted, as always, but, um, for, with our special guests for today. Um, Michelle Rossman with Rossman Farms in Southeast Minnesota. Welcome, Michelle. Yes, yeah, so happy to be here today. I um, really appreciate this opportunity to share some more information about um, our project that we did here at Rossman Farms in Southeast Minnesota. Uh, so a little bit of background about uh, myself and Rossman Farms. Uh, we are in, as I said, Southeast Minnesota, diversified uh, farming and ranching operation. And um, it's my husband and our three sons. And the boys are teenagers. Uh, so sophomore in high school, senior in high school, and sophomore in college. And as I've watched them learn and grow and, and become very active participants here on our farm, Outreach to young people, especially those who aren't active in agriculture, has been something that my husband, Tony, and I have been committed to. We're very active with 4-H and FFA um, in the area. So when I saw the call for proposals uh, with SARE Outreach, I just saw an opportunity to tie our uh, youth education with what we're doing here on our farm as we continue our learning journey in cover crops, understanding soil health and, and really changing some management practices here over the last several years. So I do have a few slides to share. Um, I'll start through those. And as I go through the slides and, and speak to the project, I think I'll be able to address really uh, what we're doing with our soil health uh, management here at Rossman Farms and how we were able to um, tie in some youth outreach through this particular project. So uh, for this project, when we when we started thinking about it, uh, we have always been a bit on the leading edge as far as I, I would call us early adopters, maybe um, just past the point of early adopters. We're always willing to work with our agronomists and, and companies that come to the table with new technology. So I also saw that opportunity to through this project when we thought about what we could do, um, evaluate some new technology practices, uh, focus on that youth education component. And also along with youth education, I'm gonna speak to how here in Southeast Minnesota, we have a great group of farmers who really enjoy learning and um, sharing knowledge about their uh, transformation in adopting conservation practices and how we're all educating each other together. So a little bit about the project. Uh, project design, we had two different fields. One that we were transitioning to, uh, to no-till using conservation practices and, and some technology to monitor uh, soil water and soil health and look at soil uh, sampling differently and analysis in that field. And then we have another field that is on a rented property. It's been corn on corn forever, will continue to be corn on corn, is still conventional tillage, et cetera. So over a two year period, we wanted to monitor the management changes in the one field compared to staying very con conventional in the second field. And in doing that, we, um, we collected soil samples uh, several times over the year. Uh, we used an Earth Scout soil monitoring system, which I'll go into a little further. And when we looked at soil analysis, we continue to, with our farmer learning group here in the area, evaluate some of the new lab analysis that's available to us. You know, moving beyond traditional soil sampling to things like Haney and these labs that are using Haney to then give you some recommendation on cover cropping and looking at soil organic matter. Some things that really, as these new analysis come forward, it's, it's a learning for all of us. Um, so we actually had the opportunity through this project where we had even local farmers, we all took the same, uh, we took soil samples, sent it to the lab, did the same analysis, and then gathered to talk about our results and what practices we had in place. So it was also an outgrowth of this project. So we took the soil samples, we had them analyzed at the lab, and then 
part of the data digestion and dissemination was bringing some high school uh, students to the table to learn about this project and be a part of it. So along with my three sons, we reached out to the local FFA group that they're a, they're a part of in the high school and asked if any students would have an interest in engaging with me on this project. And we had two who had an interest in um, really an interest out an interest in ag and understanding some of the things we were doing, but also in communication. So I'll talk a little bit about how we brought them in and, and they were part of this project. Again, um, also working with our local farmer soil health group, and we also hosted an NRCS workshop, which I'll talk about a little bit. So this Earth Scout technology that we used, um, it's their in-ground in probes uh, that can monitor things like soil temperature, um, soil uh, moisture. So we use that to set side by side with some of the soil analysis we did in the lab. Here's a picture of my son uh, helping to install those probes in the field and then a picture of what the probe actually looks like in the field. So here's an example of some of the data we, we collected with those soil probes. Um, so two, to, two pro sets of probes per field across the entire growing season. We could um, take a look at soil mo moisture tie that to what we were seeing visually and what, how we saw the crop performing, and then also link that to um, soil moisture that we had that came back from the lab. So tying that new technology that stayed in the field across the entire time frame. And you know, as a result of this, this is a technology that's used a lot uh, where there's irrigation in place. That's not something we use, but interesting tie and technology to watch my sons, you know, help install the technology and then on an app on their phone, be able to look at real time data. And, you know, to tie that with the learning of young people and how they utilize, you know, this screen a lot that they have in front of them. And I was able to um, also take that app and show it to the high school students that I, as I went in and did presentations with them. And it's really eye opening to see kids connect and understand the technology that we use in our farming practices today and the, and the type of data that we collect. So we have four of those Earth Scouts. And uh, actually, one of them is right now on loan to a local FFA group who they have their own land. So they're able to use that technology and, and look at the app and just collect data on their own land as they move through the school year and, and look at that technology that's available to farmers. Here's an example of we worked with Ward Laboratories in Nebraska and sent our soil samples out to Ward. And this shows just a subset of, of some of the data that we were able to collect um, throughout this project. We did um, do Haney testing on all of um, the soil samples that we sent in. Haney is, Haney is a test that has been gaining momentum um, with farmers, it gives you um, a lot more data points than what we would think of in traditional soil sampling. They also, um, you'll see in the orange highlighted, shows a soil health calculation and a cover crop suggestion. So they go as far as um, giving some, some suggestions of, from your soil analysis, what maybe you should put into the field. So tremendous tool for anybody who is just starting into cover crops. Here's some background knowledge from a lab based on your actual soil sample to give you some guidance on cover crops. So we were able to, you know, take these samples, um, walk through them with other farmers in the area. We continue to learn and think about, you know, there's a lot of data here. Um, did we use every single um, analysis and data point that we received? No, but we continue to learn more and more and, and work with our agronomists to say, you know, here's another, let's, you know, how are we using potassium? You know, if zinc, what, what does that mean? And it's just, it has evolved into and broadened conversations that we have obviously now with our agronomists too, right? Because we have, we have more data behind um, what we're doing in these fields and seeing an impact on those management changes that we're making, like cover crops and reducing our tillage and going to no-till. Um, and so back to farmer sharing, um, my husband's been a part of a local farmer group that's been meeting for almost 10 years. And when um, when cover cropping and conservation, you know, when they first started into this conversation, they would gather and bring in guest speakers and have learned together over the last 10 years. And I would just say to, to farmers, you know, that can look 
there's no there's no prescription for how we share information and gather and learn together. And here's a great example. We're just we had some farmers out in our pavilion. Um, everybody had had gathered a soil sample. We sent it to the same lab, had the same analysis done, and then sat down and we actually had a Zoom call with the, the the PhD agronomist from that lab who talked us through what the analysis meant. And then within our small group, just had discussions about, well, what management practices do you have in place in that farm? What are your visual observations? And learn together. So it can look like this. It can be a Zoom meeting. And whether it's five of you or three of you or 50, and I'm going to show you some other gatherings that we've had that are a lot larger than this. But um, when you can find a, you know, a trusted group that you all want to learn together and are open to sharing, for sure, your failures. We, you know, talk about that a lot. We learn a lot, a lot more from each other's failures than we do from our home runs. And um, when you're, when you're willing to share that so that other people don't have to go through the same pain and their learning curve can be a little shorter than yours, it, it can be pretty magical. And so we're very fortunate to have this local group of farmers that we work with and, and learn with together. Um, here's an example, you know, we are committed absolutely to, you know, sharing our learnings and, and bringing agriculture to anybody who will listen and, and help to bring anybody to the table to, to speak to us as farmers. We had the opportunity to host um, Senator Klobuchar and um, Senator Bozeman uh last spring and as they were doing their farm uh bill listening tour so got to talk to them about the conservation practices we have in place etc um the other slide with a group of people walking through a field this is a workshop of nrcs employees as nrcs makes a commitment to help their uh, employees really understand how to talk with and engage with farmers and get them on the farm and have hands-on experience they spent about four hours with us that day, understanding all of our practices, looking at equipment, walking fields, et cetera. So a great opportunity to help those who work with farmers all across the country to um, adopt conservation practices using um, NRCS programs. Just a really good chance for them to see practices in place and work with farmers and learn a little bit so we can all be better teams. Okay, so, um, and again, talked about, so getting into local high schools, um, across the course of this project, I was in three different high schools. Uh, we visit my son's high school every year and talk to their environmental science class. And the kids are always amazed at the technology that we use. Here I am um, on the screen, they're seeing some of the um, big maps that we use and when we sit down in the fall and all the data we lay in front of us to make management decisions you know it's not just as simple as you put the seed in the planter and you head out and there's a lot of planning and data that goes into the decisions that we make um, they've also come out and done field trips the picture on the um, bottom left of the screen is uh, the nrcs training day when we were talking to them about uh, some of the tillage equipment we use why we choose the tillage equipment that we do and the type of impact it has um, as we go out into the fields. We're very fortunate too here at Rossman Farms that um, we have a livestock component um, to our business. And um, here's a picture of our cattle grazing cover crops. So with that cover cropping, you know, we have some different opportunities with cover crops than those who are just doing um, crop farming so we're able to graze that at times in the fall and the spring uh, we've also had the opportunity to harvest in the spring and and sile rye um, that then goes into our ration for our um, cow herd in the winter so cover crops have really been something that um, it has absolutely been a journey we've had some failures for sure but we're seeing um, lots of positives in adopting um, that new technique here across a lot of different acres. And um, it's definitely something that will continue. We just had some heavy rains here in the last few days. And I actually was having a conversation with one of the boys before it came and all very worried about how much they were predicting. And he's like, mom, it's not a problem. He said, with all the no-till and cover crops we have, we're not going to have the erosion and runoff. And I said, you're exactly right. And I was happy that he had connected all of that and, and knew that the choices we were making would have an impact on how that that weather event was going to impact us. So, you know, overall, this project really has 
it it allowed us and just gave me it, it was a catalyst for more outreach. Um, definitely, it, it definitely helped us um, think a little differently about what we're doing with soil sampling, the type of analysis we're having done at the lab, and and how we can continue to to learn more in that space and and use more data points to think about inputs, think about the health of our soil, and and where we're headed on that journey. And uh, we brought a couple city kids to the farm and and exposed them to our agronomy and agronomy as a career and everything that happens here on the farm. So it was it was definitely a positive experience all around and uh, very grateful to have the opportunity to engage and, and do this project. You know, like I said, we've been meeting for almost 10 years, working with this local farmer group, talking about conservation practices. One of the frustrations has been, what are the metrics that tell me the impact of what I'm doing? And as we're all well aware, in that technology space, many, many tools are evolving, right? To help us understand, again, what is that impact? What is happening uh, when I implement cover crops, when I change my tillage practices? For generations, it's been visual, right? Because that's the only technology we have. And as you all know, have a conversation with any farmer and they can tell you what they planted in the field for the last 10 years. They can tell you where the wet spots are. They can tell you where the sandy ridges are. That that visual, that just intimate knowledge of our land. I mean, I'm fifth generation and it still just amazes me how people know their land. But technology is now finally coming to the point to give us more data, more information and better tools to really understand, especially underground, right? And there's still a lot we don't understand about soil health and microbial communities beneath the soil, but that's all coming. So with this project, you know, as I said, you know, Haney wasn't something that we were talking about 10 years ago. And some of this new soil analysis that helps me understand how I'm building organic matter, what that means, and knowing that uh, with those data points and as we connect, collect, for instance, organic matter uh, information, this is a this is a marathon. It's not something that I'm going to implement these practices and in two years I suddenly see a two percent increase in my organic matter. It is a commitment. It is something that you have to have some of those data points and continue to do it to track. But we're technology is really helping to support us now to help us really understand the impact of of some of these practices that we're making and we're all going to continue to learn together, but. Um, that has definitely been something, and I, in my mind, you know, just a sea change we've seen over the last five, six years. How are, like, how's the season been starting out for you? Uh, really well, actually. Yeah, we're we're done planting. We finished this weekend. Um, weather's been tremendous. We we were in. Uh, you know, D3 drought here in Southeast Minnesota last fall. Wow. So, um, but we've had fairly adequate moisture, just got a couple more inches of rain. Uh, so obviously the, 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 the corn's about four inches high. So we are wow. very early uh, yes. in all of this, but fingers crossed that, you know, it got a great start and here we go again, you know, faith, you've got to have faith as a farmer because there's just, so many things that we don't control and we manage what we can as well as we can. And then the rest is out of our hands. If someone's watching this video and hmm. um, was thinking about applying for a SARE grant, do you hmm. have any advice for someone like that? Everybody has the information they need to put a SARE grant in place. Don't be afraid to talk to those who support you, uh, who you're buying your inputs from, your agronomist, your soil health advisor. Even if you work with your local um, SWCD, if you've done some programs with them and, and you see a, a, a SARE opportunity come up, you know, brainstorm with them and sit down and just talk about, well, this is what we've been doing. Think about, you know, over the next couple of years, where are you headed? And, and get creative. I think there's a lot of opportunity to apply for SARE grants and, and stories that aren't being told out there just because people don't think they have a story to tell, but um, we, we all do. And I would say that 
any farmer that I know has the knowledge they need to to put together a grant and um, and and get it written. Um, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to, you know, others in the community too, who you think uh, might be able to help you tell your story, local communicators, um, extension. Uh, we have a lot of support people in our community who, who would love to see farmers, you know, go after these grants and tell their story and, and be confident in, in telling their story and, and sharing that knowledge with others. So I would absolutely uh, recommend that anybody, you know, when they see the SER opportunity, go after it and um, get creative and, and get a project put together. I guess the what, one last thing I would I would say to farmers, you know, we, we spoke to the opportunity to apply for SER grants. Um, a small step that we can all take is that outreach to our local high schools. You know, teachers are always very eager to connect with community members. And a simple, you don't even have to have slides, just going in and seeing a different personality in front of them. High school students will engage, right? And many high schools today have environmental science or obviously just basic, you know, biology science classes that many, many of the things we do on the farm would apply. Um, so, you know, reaching out to, to local high schools and taking that opportunity to to get in front of high school students and, and connect with a community member, help them understand where their food is coming from and what agriculture in the local community looks like. Uh, we even had the opportunity, we had a math teacher who um, reached out and I was able to get them a data set from uh, some of those Earth Scout uh, monitors that we had in the fields. And he was able to use that as a real world application in a math class. Um, so when we think about all the different data points and things that we do, there's so many different connections with with high school students. And you know, if kids aren't exposed to to careers, they they don't they don't think about them, right? And um, it's just a great opportunity to expose kids to to agriculture and um, what it looks like today in modern agriculture and something that we can all do, you know, in an afternoon in our communities. So like for this time of year, if we were to visit your farm, like where would where would be like your sweet spot you like to go to or like it's like ah, this is one of my favorite places or my pasture <laughs> checks every evening. <laughs> right in that, you know, the, the hour of perfect daylight where pictures are just incredible black cattle on bright green grass <laughs> is just yeah, I love to get on a four wheeler and head down through and just walk through the cattle. And, you know, it's a time to do health checks, get eyes on everybody. But um, the scenery is just unbelievable right now. This grass is, you know, three feet high. And um, yeah, it's just beautiful. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And thank yeah, you. let me know if you need anything. Oh, likewise. Thank you. Wish you thank well. You. Hey. <laughs>